Hi, I'm Bill McKelvey, and I'm going to be talking to you about Heise glass. And this is my table setting. I've been collecting Heise over 35 years. Recently, I've been having a lot of fun sharing my passion for the beauty and elegance in each one of these pieces that I put together on these table settings. Just consider all of the skilled craftsmanship that it took to design and then make these pieces. Not only that, but the master cutters who cut some of the cuttings on these pieces, the people in the etching department that put the acid etches on. It's just amazing to think about. It's kind of like a Disney moment for me. What I mean by that is it's magical. The A.H. Heise Company, as you may know, started in 1896 in Newark, Ohio, and closed its doors in 1957. Most of what you're going to see today is part of the Empress pattern. Empress began in 1930 and ended in 1938. This time period is considered by Heise collectors as the second color period of three. The first color period started just a few years after the factory opened. The colors they had then were em emerald, which was a deep green, Vaseline, or what they called canary, Ivorina Verde, which was like custard, and opal, which was their white glass. But then came the second color period. During this time, Wilson Heise had just taken over presidency of the company in the early 20s. He hired Emmett Olson, the chemist, to come in and they experimented with color. And they came up with some great ones. And this pattern, most of them are evident in that. So let's get over here to this table and we'll look at the first color, Flamingo. This is a nine inch face with dolphin feet. Another fun element of many of the items found in Empress. These, this vase can also be found in most of the colors that I'm showing you today. Next we have a water goblet in Sahara. Water goblets were one of three stems made in the Empress pattern. There was a sherbet, a saucer champagne, and then the water goblet. Heise also made to, uh, the sodas, an 8 ounce and a 12 ounce, and you can find them with no feet or with dolphin feet. The dolphin footed ones are hard, much harder to find. Then we have Moon Gleam, and this is a beautiful shade of green. It's probably my favorite color in Empress. This is a dolphin footed, again, mayonnaise. And a fun item to collect with this is all the different mayonnaise ladles that Heise made. And they came in a variety of colors as well. This is a cathedral vase. It's not part of the Empress pattern, but definitely made to complement it. This item is flared, but it also came in a uh, straight version, as well as with two side handles. Cobalt blue, Heise called Stigel blue. Next we have the larger of two sizes of a celery, or what they called a pickle or olive. And this is an Alexandrite. Alexandrite is a dichloric color, which means it changes color depending on the light source. In fluorescent color, Heise's Alexandrite turns green or blue, depending on the piece. And last, the last color you can find Empress in is tangerine. I'm just going to show that up to light. Tangerine is a struck color. When it was first come out of the mold, it was yellow. 
and then when it was put into the glory hole to be restruck or reheated, it turned a varying color of orange all the way to red, depending on how long it was reheated. Notice this plate is square, unlike the plates I have on my table. This is actually considered 1401 and a half. All right, now, for my table setting today, I started with a 10 and a half inch dinner plate. This is in crystal. However, you can find many of the colors in that 10 and a half inch plate. Then we have the Stigel Blue 8 inch plate to complement. I think the crystal and blue combination looks wonderful together. The round plates came in sizes 12, 10 and a half, 9, 8, 7, 6, and 4 inch, I believe. Next we have a 4 inch bowl that I topped it with. But notice, this 4 inch bowl has something a little bit different, and that is an optic. This is actually part of the Queen Anne pattern, which began the same year that they discontinued Empress. Heisey took the Empress mold and added these undulations or optic. I love how the light just grabs your attention. Empress is a great pattern for people to collect. No matter if you're this like the simple elegance of the crystal glass or if you want to kick up the crystal glass with a notch and add a cutting to it like this handled sandwich or maybe this ice bucket here cut by email crawl this ice bucket has beautiful cutting on it it's a beautiful example of the quality of a master cutter and the liberty he was able to take while working for Heisey. There are a couple pieces in the museum with that same cutting attributed to Emil Kral. One is a pumpkin punch bowl and underplate. The other is a salad bowl. Both are found on the same catalog page. This here is another one of the mayonnaise. This time we have a mayonnaise ladle to accompany it. And it's marked in the center. And notice it has a cutting on it as well. Makes a beautiful set. Next, we want to take a look at these salt and pepper shakers. They're both a little cloudy, so I hope you're able to see the etching on it. But Heisey also etched the crystal glass and some of the colored glass too, I should say, uh, shouldn't uh, exclude them. Uh, some of the etches you'll find are Old Colony, Arctic Etch, Antarctic Etch, Titania, Rosalie. Um, you guys are probably familiar with this one here. This is Orchid Etch. And this is a fan vase in the Lariat pattern, as you can see the Lariat. So... Um, next, I want to talk about the glasses that I chose. I chose the Spanish stemware, which was developed in 1933. And this is one of the most common color combinations available um, with the cobalt and the crystal stem. It also came in Sahara, Moongleam. No, not Moongleam. I apologize. Sahara and Alexandrite, and then also in very rare in amber. The reason I chose that stem versus the Empress stem is because Empress was only made in crystal, moongleam, and flamingo that I'm aware of. Next, I have the Shasta pattern from 1938, and the cutting on here is one of my favorites. It's George the Six. Just look how beautiful that is. The George the Six cutting, 
I grew up knowing as George IV, due to a typographical error in the Heise catalogs. A lot of collectors grew up knowing it as that. Next, we have a Koval shaker. This was named after Ray Koval, the designer. He designed several items for Heise, and this is one of them. It's a three-piece, has the stopper, the strainer, and then vessel. Another item that he made that looks very similar to this was a mailbox. And the mailbox was basically this vessel, a little bit larger, and then it had a slot for the mail. And it was affixed to a piece of wood and a metal uh, mechanical uh, item. All right. I need to talk to you about the candlesticks I chose. These actually predate Empress. They are considered Empress, but they were introduced in 1929, along with a bowl that matches, a two-handled floral bowl, and they were sold as a console set. The pattern number is actually 135. They did come in most of the colors that I showed you. you I don't think I've seen one in uh, tangerine, but they are listed as being made in marigold. Marigold was a very unstable color, and even this, what I'd consider a very good example of marigold, has a little bit of lines of what they would call sugaring or crazing. And that goblet is called Albemarle, one of Heise's tallest goblets. Okay, well, let's see. Last thing I guess I could talk about here would be that I have a lamp here it's from, I think, 1911-ish. It is the uh, electro-portable lamp. It's in the Aristocrat. It's all original, except for the wiring. I think the plug was uh, different. All right, I do have a couple other things to add. Here we have an Empress individual nut. I just wanted you to see the difference between like the nut and then the mayonnaise. In between the mayonnaise size, there would have been a, a mint. And then the floral bowl that we have here. And then graduating all the way up to the centerpiece that I have chose today, and that's the punch bowl. The punch bowl um, is part of the Queen Anne pattern. As you can see, it has the undulations, it has that optic. It is sitting on a 15 inch Empress buffet plate. It is not an underplate, although often collectors use it as such. I wanna thank Jonathan Furman for inviting me to do this video for you all. And I hope that this video finds you healthy and able to get out there and hunt the things that you're passionate about. Thank you.